You're listening to Zap Night, a video game review podcast with your host, Danny and Kaylee. Welcome to a very special episode of Zap Night. I am your host, Danny. And I'm your co host, Kaylee. I'm officially going to label this episode four, even though it's not exactly a video game review. But today we are reviewing Final Fantasy XV's King's Glaive, the movie. King's Glaive! Um, the Yay. biggest reason why I wanted to review this is one, because it was awesome, and <laughs> two, because we're huge Final Fantasy fans, and the opportunity to go and see. Uh, Final Fantasy movie in the theater only comes once every like 20 Never. years. So <laughs> <laughs> I was super excited to go see this game or movie. And it was like a game. It was almost. very much like a game. But, uh, you know, it was, it was so cool to see it in the theaters. We got super lucky to have a theater within two hours from where we live. So it was really cool to be able to go and see it in the theater and to kind of be with other like-minded Final (laughs) Fantasy fans. Even though there was one guy who was like... Oh my gosh. That was in the... I can't. That's the beginning of the video game. Okay. So the end of the movie... It ends with the beginning scene of the Final Fantasy XV game. And you kind of get the sense like, oh, well, that's mu- that must be what happens at the beginning and of Final Fantasy XV. this douchebag had the gall to look down the aisle, because we were at the opposite end. He had the gall to look down the aisle and go, and that's at the beginning of the game. Uh, so if I could not have come to that conclusion on my own, what makes you think I want you spoiling that for me, you ungrateful little... <laughs> <laughs> so, full disclosure here, we specifically been trying to avoid any input about Final Fantasy XV. So um, our information might be... Meh. Yeah, and, and it might be a little inaccurate as to what the game is really about. It's kind of our assumptions and what we've taken from the, the movie. Even... As we go over the story, this is kind of from our perspective. There's a lot of holes in the movie itself that they, I, I believe, purposely left unexplained. And so we're kind of filling in the, the blanks on kind of from our perspective of it. So don't take every word we say as, well, Zap Knight said this and it's <laughs> wrong. No, no. It's our perspective of, you know, seeing it. We've seen it twice now, actually. Yeah, we actually... Went to see another showing and missed the first 20 minutes. (laughs) Traffic and stuff. So, well, in any case, we saw most of the movie twice. Twice. Uh, We saw the first five minutes of it or ten minutes of it. We almost didn't even see it. Yeah, it's true. We got to the theater late. And well, no, no, we were talking about. I'm talking about even before. Oh, that. yeah, we that's true. Almost just didn't go. Yeah, we. Uh, it was on a work night. You know, guys. I really wanted to be going into Final Fantasy 15 completely blind, and maybe watching the movie when I first got the movie in the game all together in my super awesome ultimate edition <laughs> bundle that I'm spending $300 on. You know, I kind of wanted to wait until I had the game in hand to watch the movie and go straight into the game afterwards. But I'm kind of glad I didn't. I'm glad that we watched... It. This is like a nice, you know, intro to the Final Fantasy XV universe. And I'm glad that we started with this. And I'm glad that I've had some time to go over all the bits and pieces and nitpick it a little bit before the game comes out. Yeah, that's I. This was such a good movie, Danny. I know. I was I, there. Every time I think about this movie, I'm like, that was a good. And I don't know if it's because I'm biased and I like Final Fantasy. If it really was a good movie, but oh, it was such a good movie. And your wife, who she's not, I, she's a Final Fantasy fan by marriage. <laughs> so it's like you know she's she likes final fantasy and and can respect it graphically but uh, she she told me that she, she liked it. she legitimately likes the the movie so i you know i know there's people out there that probably hated this movie or what, was completely confused what did rotten tomatoes give it i don't remember it was something it was, it was pretty bad which as i recall we which we were discussing in the car on the way there it was you know you gotta look at this with the mindset of this is for a video game. Like, it's not a movie. That... It's, it's really meant to have 
gaps in it and it's meant to not release every little bit of detail on what's going on. I like to think of it as just a very long intro to a video game. You know, the very exactly, beginning. Exactly, yeah. The, like, intro cut yeah. scene. Like, that's exactly that was, what this like, would be. It was like, it was too long to just put all on one disc. So we'll just release it for a video. I don't know. It, I, it works out. It was pretty cool. We yeah. were lucky enough to have a theater nearby. Uh, but I know that they just released it for digital download not too long ago. So if you haven't seen it and would like to see, see it, it, I think you can download it and watch it. If you're getting it with your game, you may as well wait. If you don't have a theater nearby, you may as well just wait. You know, that's we really were lucky because I think when I lo- when I last looked at one of the days they were being only like eight states were showing it. Yeah, it really that, wasn't very and, many states and at all. And of those states, you know, there was multiple in the state, but I mean, it was, you know, if you lived in like Pennsylvania, I don't know, I think Pennsylvania, I, yeah, you it know, was, you were it kinda... was very few. And actually, they just released a handful more locations that were showing it, oh, well, that's like a good. week after we watched it the first time. <laughs> um, so, you know, there's, there's a lot of opportunities to go and see it if it's still playing. I um, definitely, but, though, if you get a chance and you like. If you're excited for the game, especially, I recommend go, see go to the it. theater. Go see it in the theater. And you get to be so surrounded cool. by your fellow Final Fantasy kinsmen. And you can kill them all because you probably hate them. <laughs> I, you know, Why would you spoil had, the game? Well, I had this like <laughs> small feeling like this is my game and I Aww. should be the only one. Like, you know, why are all these people here who you think they know everything? Laughing. This is my game. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. It, it was it was a great movie, and uh, I'm going to warn you ahead of time, there's going to be a spoilers. ton of spoilers in this, especially well, during the we'll story segment. We'll try and keep it to minimal, but yeah, there's going to be major. So, I mean, if you're, if you're trying to avoid um, spoiling the movie, just, just stop. You, you may, you may want to just go stop. Go download it, watch, watch it, it and, and come back <laughs> and join <laughs> us and, you know, let us know your thoughts, but... So we're going to kind of stick to our typical review like we would a video game. We're not going to rate it, but I just kind of want to go over it in the same format. So first off is story. So the story kind of, the way it starts off is kind of unique. Well, I don't know. It's not unique, I guess, for a For a Final Fantasy game, no. No. There's betrayal everywhere, as there is. Oh, yeah. So it starts off with, how old is Noctis in this? When he when it first starts off, he's probably well, like five. Yeah, he's really young. So it's the way it starts out is that they Noctis has been either fatally injured or there's something wrong with him, and they are visiting visiting Tenebrae, which is where Luna Freya is from, and they're trying to get him healed, and they're attacked by Niflheim, and Nif- while while Noctis and King Regis is um, right. visiting. And so Nibelheim under Emperor I- Idolas. I'm gonna butcher these some of these names. Yeah, I know so that, bad. Uh, Final Fantasy names are always so hard to pronounce. <clears throat> it's gonna be awful when we review m- other games, especially ones that don't have voice acting and you can't be corrected. <laughs> so, um, basically, there the start of this entire movie is that. Uh, Lucius and Niflheim don't get along. and They're at war. They're at war. And they've been at war for many years. And they uh, they take... Uh, Niflheim is actually... Um, Tenebrae is in Niflheim territory. They're kind of their own thing. But they're, they're individual. They're independent, but they're in Niflheim territory. So Niflheim has control over it. And Niflheim, as far as the story <laughs> from... from- our point of view goes from from the protagonist's point of view is the evil empire you know so Niflheim is invading in these countries and killing people and so when they invade on Tenebrae they are really after King Regis and they're after the queen the king and queen of Tenebrae which is well they kill Luna, Luna Freya's parents and Luna Frey actually has a brother that they show in this in this little flashback, and they kill um, the ne- Niflheim kills the mother and father. I don't know. I don't if think the father, the father was even is really in the addressed. picture anyway. But they kill the mother, and then Luna Freya and her brother, which I don't know her, her brother's name. I 
Uh, but they get captured by Nephilim. They get sent and cared for, I guess, from that. From these 12. So, so 12 years pass. 12 years later, this. yeah. So you start off with this war between the two. And Nephilim is shown to bring in these. these They call them demons, but I, they looked an awful lot like. A certain weapon. Well, I think all you know, and I've I was thinking about this. I notice in a lot of the Final Fantasy games, the enemy empire or the enemy in general has some sort of ability to summon monsters, and you really it's it's very apparent in this movie because they bring in a, a very very large demon. That they <laughs> that they call, but it really was uh, the diamond weapon from Final <laughs> Fantasy VII. Like to a T, this thing looked exactly like the diamond weapon, and it was amazing. <laughs> it was so cool. What's interesting about this though is that as of now in the in the movie, um, the only known crystal is residing in Insomnia under Lucius territory, so no one else has magic. So they have no magic. So King, Nifelheim... King Regis and his city of uh, Insomnia are really the only people that can use magic. And it's, as far as we can tell, and we don't know because we don't know I, what Final I Fantasy XV sure. comes, but it, it's the only one that has a, a crystal is where I was going. So oh, I see. Yeah. I, well, I wasn't sure if... I... We've we've all we've been kind of talking back and forth through this whole thing after watching it, but I couldn't tell if everyone in uh in the town could use magic or if it was just certain people under the king that could use magic. Yeah, and they don't address that, and it, and it's hard telling if the magic comes from the crystal or if it comes from the king or if the king controls the crystal or if the crystal. It's both. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it's really hard telling, but it's it's very apparent that once the king died, everybody lost their ability to use magic, and we'll get into that. Well, continuing on with the story. So 12 years later, they have, um, they, they also, I, sorry, again, to interrupt, but, um, they also address that Luna Freya and Noctis are betrothed and they're, well, they're destined they, to get married. I think they started off as childhood friends because yeah, probably, what happened, th- well, I think that they were, arra- it was an arranged marriage to begin with. Well, what happens is, is that after this war that we've been fighting, they retreat after these demons and Nibelheim sends its chancellor to the capital to propose a treaty between Nibelheim and Lucius. Because the Lucius territory is clearly losing. These demons are strong. Well, the diamond weapon just wipes everyone <laughs> out. And what they want what they want out of this treaty is for Nibelheim to take over surrounding territories and Lucius will get Princess Lunafreya and Noctis to marry. It's kind of a, I get this, you get this type right. of a deal. A, a bit of a peace treater, treaty. And, you know, King Regis is very thrilled about this because the, he, the last time he saw Luna Freya was that 12 years ago but when they were attacked. But he's also suspicious. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He knows that there's and something the chancellor, else going on. There's always an evil chancellor. There's always an evil chancellor. But, and he even, he's got like this wing, this leather wing attached to his I think hand. that they're playing on the one-winged angel sort of vibe <laughs> that a lot of the Final Fantasy games throw out now because of Sephiroth and, and even um, Kuja, or not Kuja, um, uh, Final Fantasy VI, what's his name? Kefka? Kefka, yeah. I think he has, like, the one wing thing going on, too. Anyway, so I, I'm wondering <laughs> if they're hinting that maybe this Chancellor is, like, the ultimate bad guy of Final Fantasy XV, but I, I don't know. That's pure speculation. I have no idea. So, for the main part of the story, which is most important, is you've got your young protagonist, Nix Ulrich, who's a member of the King's Glaive. And the King's Glaive was forged by King Regis... And I believe they were made of members outside of of Lucius itself. Like they're made of different from different colonies, places. Well, clearly, I guess. at least Nix and his friends are of not the King's from Lucius. Are, are not from the the city because they kind of are treated as outcasts throughout the movie. So yeah, he's got his two friends, uh, Libertus and Crow. Which they've got. I, I really liked Crow's design. I, I, I know <laughs> she kind of looked alienish, but Libertus, it wasn't so bad. Libertus looked like 
Jonah Hill. Jonah Hill. Thank you. I just Jonah could Hill. not get over the Jonah Hill thing. Uh, you know, I didn't think he did. Honestly, I thought he looked a lot like me. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I thought, you know, I could cosplay as him. And then after the story went on, I'm like, I don't want to cosplay as him. <laughs> <laughs> so in any case, these they are the member of the King's Glaive, of many of the King's Glaive. And when King Regis agrees to sign this tre- treaty, some of the King's Glaive members who have homes out in these other territories aren't exactly thrilled about it. They're very worried that their homes are going to be destroyed after this treaty <clears throat> is made. So I'm um, fast forwarding a bit. Um, Nyx is assigned to retrieve... And protect Princess Luna Freya when things kind of go a little unplanned. Yeah, she gets sent off to be prisoned within a fleet of airships. Which ends up being a Uh, trap. Yeah, it was. It it ended up being a trap. And they didn't realize it at at the time. They thought that they were being proactive in retrieving her before the fleet even make it to the city. Well, when the trap actually gets sprung... They show this big tentacle monster coming out. I have to say it. I have to. They show this big tentacle monster um, picking people up and smashing them all in. And um, it turns out to be Ultros from Final Fantasy VI. And it's amazing. It's so cool. He's so... And he makes this wicked noise. Yeah. I was I was paying a little more attention the second time through. You know, now that... The second time through, I already had the story down, so it was like I could focus more on graphics Finer and music, details. and yeah. And Ultros was awesome. He made this really cool, like crazy screech oh, noise. Yeah, it was really cool. <laughs> it, it was. It was just. It was it so was cool. Really cool. The noise was really eerie, and it kind of sh- sent sh- chills down your spine a little bit. But it just. It just yeah. set the the mood to this monster is something to not be messed with. <clears throat> But in any case... So in any case, Nippelheim's peace treaty turns out to be a ruse to both invade and conquer Lucius, its crystals, and subsequently the King's Heirloom, the the, the Ring of Lucii, which was not addressed till almost the end of the game. And I think that movie. was intentional. I think that that was... It, it wasn't supposed to be the main focus of the movie until the very end. And the very end kind of made it the focus, which kind of seemed like laziness in story writing, but I don't know. I I wasn't sure, but the way I understood it was, is King Regis has, has this ring, and this ring is passed down through the family, so you have to be... It's got to be King Bloodline. King Bloodline And or you have to be worthy, which, you know, it's... And you're... When the person puts on the ring, they're kind of put into trial and judged over whether they're worthy to have the powers of the the ring or not. And if they're deemed unworthy, they they die. Burn. They burn a fiery And they they show that a couple times. Um, The first time was during the the peace treaty goes south. (laughs) And... um, Luna the, Freya's brother picks it up. Yeah, after it's after it gets cut off by <laughs> yeah. um, General Glauca. Glauca. Yeah, that sounds right. So um, he cuts it off King Regis's hand, and the ring goes rolling. And Luna Freya's brother picks it up and puts it on. And you kind of get this moment because it's the first time you really understand what's going on with the ring, and or you first figure out that there's something going on with the ring. And he kind of is standing in this in this position. And he's like, "What? What? Why? I'm worthy of this <laughs> ring." And and then he just catches on fire and then just burns to the ground. And then the ring goes rolling back to King Regis, and he puts it back on again. So when uh, so eventually King Regis actually dies, and all of the magic is just gone. He and- dies by the hands of the general. Glockow. Glocka? Glocka? I, I don't know. Glaucoma? Glaucoma. General Glaucoma. <laughs> he has <laughs> terrible eyesight, by the way. <laughs> um, but the magic goes, which you don't, you don't, Nyx doesn't realize until he is He's actually trying to ca- do some Part magic. of the magic is that teleport thing that you can kind of see in some of the previews of Final Fantasy XV, where they throw their weapon and then they can teleport to it. Well, Nyx utilizes that in battle, and he gets confronted he throws and throws his weapon and tries to teleport, but it, it doesn't work because the king has died. 
So, so they're lifting out the crystal. The ring is actually given to Luna Freya uh, when King Regis dies. And they're off trying to flee from the city safely. Get Luna Freya out of the city. That's the and goal. And so uh, Niflheim is sending in their demons at this point. They're destroying the they're, city. They're taking over the city. They're, they're not only taking the crystal and killing the king, but they are completely... Um, Taking down all and, the civilians and, too, and not including where you know the members of the Kingsclave have completely turned. There is no Kingsclave anymore. Yeah, there was anymore there was a big point. betrayal. Um, and on the airships, the Kings, retrieving Luna Freya. The Kingsclave have completely disbanded, aside from a few, you know, a, a few of the people who are loyal to the king, and which at this point really is just uh, Nyx and Luna Freya. <laughs> And, as, as it seems, and anyway. the general who of of the king's glaive who has been missing at this point, you finally find out that he's actually been working as he's, General Glock Glock Glaucoma. Glaucoma. <laughs> and did you, I? I didn't. I realized that he was probably a bad guy a little into after everyone was betraying each other, and he was just gone because yeah. Nix is trying to reach him on his earpiece and stuff well and and he sets up this trap saying you know hey meet us at this location as soon as possible and and he's like well can can i get someone to come pick me up and he's like no no we can't do that we need you to meet us at this location well when nix finally makes it to that location there's nobody there and then um shot yeah he gets shot yep that's right (laughs) so he's fatally injured from this gunshot and he's also broken his leg assuming when when the general shows up and so he's he's kind of stuck him and luna freya are stuck he's injured fatally the general is approaching him the guy who shot him actually ended up dying because he too put on the ring yeah don't put on the ring (laughs) but anyway luna freya is right about to put on the ring to save the situation because General Glaucoma is coming for him. So yeah, and uh, she last... goes to she goes to put on the ring, and he takes it from her. Uh, Nix takes it from her and puts it on himself, and um, he obviously gets put on trial from all the past kings. And interestingly, because um, King Regis has passed by this point, you hear King Regis, and yeah, he says he... To, to consider consider the soul because he he's seen he you can, know yeah. his his determination or whatever but yeah and they they didn't give it to him initially that that part was kind of interesting especially the second time around because you can kind of tell that they're debating and they're like no no he's not worthy and when they decide that he's not worthy he actually catches on fire like he's about yep. to start to burn and then last minute he's like I don't care about my life I care about the life of everyone else who who's not otherwise going to get a chance. That's when he's granted the powers of the ring Until for sunrise. for the night. And so he, I mean, that, what what kind of deal is that? You either burn to death now or you <laughs> right? have until sunrise, you know. What, <laughs> what kind of options are those? I thought it was really cool though and it was I, I like the selflessness that because Final Fantasy tries to show that in some characters the selflessness and willing to help others and I liked that of this the, I mean I really loved this it character really, by the yeah, end of the movie yeah it really made this character shine and, and show what he's you know, really made of this character Nyx doesn't I mean he, they they tell his past a little bit he's had this little sister and but you know when they show you know shots of his room there's nothing really much there except like this cardboard of like newspaper clippings and stuff like that like his room is just bare like yeah, there's nothing he really doesn't they really he don't nothing. give him a much of a backstory he, and i wonder if they're going to dive a little bit into it in the the game you know i was thinking uh, so let's finish the story I'll, I'll tell you what i was thinking in a little bit okay so anyway nix does get granted the powers of the ring and he stops general Gl- glaucoma from attacking and he then obviously can use all the awesome magic of the ring including the teleportation thing and he can use lightning and he can use fire and it's all amazing <laughs> He ends up battling, and you see these shots of these stone 
like monuments or whatever throughout the city as you're going through probably the, past kings i'm assuming it's past kings or and, past warriors or something it would make sense if it was past kings because it's almost like the kings were taking you know form and i kind of noticed that the kings in the the like silhouettes of the kings that you can see when they're doing the whole judging thing mm-hmm. look very similar to the statues so i i kind of tried to make that you know that connection sure. there but it looked so much like Knights of the Round from Final Fantasy VII, <laughs> when all of these statues come to life and they start attacking the diamond weapon. At this point, that is take that is taking down the city. Well, interesting is it's kind of like parallel to that. Nyx is fighting General Glaucoma through this whole thing, General and Glaucoma. they <laughs> they kind of show them like one would make a like. Nyx would make a punch, and then this big statue would make a punch yeah, on the so demons. Yeah, so it was almost like they were... Parallel, almost. Yeah, th- well, and... These kings are for Lucius. Right. And I felt like it was the city fighting back. The city fighting back against the diamond weapon. <laughs> um, But in any case, sunrise comes at both both the lives of Nyx and <laughs> General Glaucoma. Yeah, and you know, they kind of, they obviously have that Final Fantasy moment of oh, where yeah, the general packed. the general gets impaled and twice. Yeah, twice. And you know, they have that little moment of, well, you know, this is this is how it is and you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't follow what everyone else is doing sort of thing and you know, so it, yeah, it's it's kind of that that Final Fantasy moment, and then um, Nyx does end up. He starts. It's like he, he starts like turning to ash. Away. Yeah, and it, he, I he thought kinda, that shot was so cool. It though. was very cool, where his skin is like just flaking away, and you know, they they pretty much end it there. The the only other. Th- thing that happened at the end was Luna Freya is escorted is escorted out of town and she denies the final escort out of town. And this from is from Liber- Libertus, Libertus who, which also his other companion has passed away from the betrayal of the many betrayals in this yeah. movie. She has also, which I'm kind of sad. Oh because yeah. Crow, Crow passed away too. Yeah. She, I, I really, I know and you And they didn't, didn't really give her much time in this movie it was like she she was there and then she was given this order from um the kingsglaive captain king glaucoma yeah the king the captain the kingsglaive which was general glaucoma gave her orders to go outside the city to meet luna freya well it turned out to be this trap where she was then murdered and well and which that was taken even further because she's delivering this pin, right? And I think it was it was all part of the ultimate plan to get Nix to go to the. Well, I didn't to under- get get Nix out of the town, out of the. I city. didn't make this connection really till the second time going through, but he even planned it so that Nix would get her belongings, still deliver the the pin, which has a tracking device in it, which helps them find them in the city, which. You think he's being clever and tracking her when in reality that's what they wanted this whole right, time. And yeah. I didn't and really make that connection. You wouldn't notice it until you watch it twice, at least. And you know, you know, you know what to look for in the keys, you know, of the storyline. But yeah, that that was a very big po- point was that this was all planned from the beginning. Everything. I mean, everything that the this captain had been, you know, implanted in the King's Glaive to do really was full blown and you could see that it was a it was a plan that they put into place and it followed all the way through executed all the way through oh yeah that's which was i thought and, was until he died and you know the, he, obviously the the evil empire couldn't have predicted nix to be granted the powers of the the lucia the lucia the ring of lucy so <laughs> i have to say i even though nix died they didn't actually show him completely disintegrate. I think he died. I they I really want you to like believe that, but how many times have Final Fantasy characters died and then I just suppose. magically showed back up again? I really feel like though that this was separate to fifteen, but I I would be okay if he died. I loved his character to death. I I feel like that it was just well accomplished with like if there was ever to be a death scene that i was okay with it was this one yeah i mean it was it was cool i was really sad about king regis's death 
really <laughs> not i mean it was just it was it was, it was just sad it wasn't he really was that they dude. did it wrong it was just you know it was sad and it, yeah and i think that that's what made us so sad is that he was okay with it he was like well my time is done i i'm too weak to fight this war anymore and he's kind of passing it on to um noctis and i you know i i felt that and i felt what he was going for i understood that he was he knew he was getting old he knew that he couldn't continue on anymore the way that he was going. And that's what Luna Freya's mission now is to, get, to get that, that ring, ring to Noctis. Noctis. And that's kind of where it ends off. And then you get into the final credits and then the scene where the one guy has to look down and scream that that's in the beginning of the video <laughs> game. Yeah. Oh, he made me so angry. I know. I I really wanted to just flip him off. I made eye contact with the guy. I really should have just the evil eye, the cranked evil out eye. a middle finger. <laughs> so, um, graphically, uh, this movie was really awesome. Except, except for the the lip, lip sinking was way off. It was so which off. gets a little better near the end, but again, I don't think it does because I tried watching it the second time around Maybe. and it didn't. It was like <laughs> I think towards we just the stopped end, looking at it after towards a while. the end. You you don't notice it as much because there's a lot of action going on. So they, I think they cleverly avoid showing lip movement. But it just, it was so off in the beginning during all the really normal dialogue that it just, it just made, was it was, it, yeah, that's exactly it. That's where I was going. It was distracting more than anything else. But otherwise, the level of detail in this movie is very Their amazing. skin, they show like old scars and like just facial There's this clip. imperfections. There's this clip. Uh, it's a scene where Nyx is looking at the hairpin, and you can see his fingers. You can see, like, little... You know how sometimes the edges of your fingernails the kind cuticles. of have, like, a, a fray to the skin a little bit? You could kind of see that on his skin. You could see, like, the I the fingerprints. You could see, like, the, the ridges in his nail. And it was just... It was so amazing, was really, the level really of detail. And, I mean, you can see that even in their faces, you know, every beard hair. There was, I noticed in one of the one of the shots, you could see King Regis, and he has this mustache hair. He has one that's a little bit longer than the rest <laughs> of them. And I'm like, I've seen that on people. <laughs> like, I've seen people with that one mustache hair that's a little bit too long, and you just oh, want to clip Jamie. it. Only you. <laughs> but, you know, again, it, it goes back to the level of detail. And then the monsters are amazing. Let's kind of... Can, can you think of all the monsters that they kind oh of my gosh. showed? I the behemoths. The behemoths I love were the behemoths. amazing. They were so cool. They were a little bigger than what I was anticipating. Really, I thought they were a little bit smaller than I'm used to for behemoths. Well, maybe that's now I can't remember. We missed it on the second time we watched it. Yeah, too. I know. I knew. I I just remember the size being off to what I was expecting. But you know, in final in many of the Final Fantasy games, they are always of different sizes. Yeah, but usually behemoths are behemoths. behemoths. I mean, they're they're massive creatures and, you know, powerful. And, it, you know, even like in Type-O, Type-O, the behemoths are, you know, city blocks big. <laughs> I mean, they're huge. So I, I was kind of, I, I did notice, I took mental note that they were a little bit smaller than normal behemoths, but they were clearly behemoths. <laughs> yeah, they um, looked really and cool. And the, the diamond ro- weapon, in the very first shot of the diamond weapon, he's kind of shrouded in like a, a, a fiery tornado slash like sand. And you can't really see it, but you There's can like kind of slow reveal. You can kind of tell, and it's like, wait, is that what I think it is? Oh my gosh, I think I know what that is. <laughs> and then he comes into the city later on in the movie, and he's like being helicoptered in, and it's amazing to see the diamond weapon from Final if Fantasy VII. It's VII. not the diamond weapon. It oh, is it, so it totally dangerous. is. It totally is. I, <laughs> you know, I mean, they name everything different in all the Final Fantasies, it's totally, without a doubt, the Diamond Weapon. I mean, if you look up... before, After you watch this movie, look up the Diamond Weapon, and it's spot on. <laughs> it's the same thing. I don't know, though. I don't know if the shoulder... Like, the shoulders had the... They were shooting off, like, little mini-missiles, and I don't think the original had that. I think they did. Really? I think he did, yeah. Because oh. I remember when um, the Diamond Weapon, I'm pretty sure, is the one that comes out of the water yeah. towards the... 
towards a... like like one of the first weapons that um you fight in Final Fantasy VII, and he shoots. It's at the... like the tip of my tongue. The cannon, please. He, he shoots Ju- Junon. Junon. Yeah. He shoots Junon with those missiles, and I think they come from the shoulder blades or the oh, the maybe. heart center part. Either either one, and I mean it's. It's the same thing. The only difference is that the the shoulders like kind of open up for yeah. this monster in King's Glaive, where I don't think he did for Final Fantasy VII. But I mean, still, it, the same design. It it was totally the same. It was totally the same monster. So not really. Um, I don't think that they're trying to say that it's the same universe by any stretch of the imagination. I'm just, you know, you know how they they use the same character. This, you know, they they have that like the Cactars and the Marlboros and Ultros. You know, they they have. Speaking that. of, they weren't really big monsters in this per se, but um, Marlboros. There was like a little was like cartoon commercial type thing on a TV, and then one of the vans that they uh, use is called the Speedy Chocobo Cleaning Service. I think. Yeah, and that, that was, was so, so cute. cute. I would have liked to have seen actual chocobos. I know I would have too. That would have been awesome. I think that they're saving that for a big reveal in the game, Ooh. which is fine by me. And and really, uh, the fact that they put Ultros in this at all blows my <laughs> mind. I it was like, just it was so cool. I thought it was a Marlboro at first when I was seeing all the tentacles. Sure, if you haven't played Final Fantasy VI, you you would think that. Except in Final Fantasy VI, you can tell that he's like an octopus, except he has these like little tentacles in front of his mouth. Oh yeah, you could definitely tell and it was tell, a Marlboro. Oh yeah, it was it was so cool. And, and interesting too is the phone that you get from Crow is uh she has a little Marlboro I think it's a Marlboro um like figure charm, charm on her phone. It was pretty cute. Yeah, but I did notice that. I don't know if there was really I mean you had a couple bugs and whatnot but yeah, I don't... the bees i didn't really i i kind of recognized the bees a little bit from other final fantasy games Ooh, but it wasn't huge i remember we were gonna talk about um in one of the one of the days before the treaty is being signed they have this like party and in the background there's this like aquarium type thing and they had several very pretty like fish i, I want to say monsters almost yeah they really were i don't know what similar to the monsters that they have in... I, i'm sure there is one like maybe there was specifically some in there that were in games but i couldn't name them off the top of my head yeah it one of them looked just like leviathan though i'm it was a very small leviathan <laughs> very if small it was leviathan. a very small and untamed or tame leviathan but that was it was really i thought pretty. for sure that that was going to come into play later because i swear in some of the clips that I don't want to give it away, but some of the clips you kind of see Leviathan being controlled by um, Luna Freya, but I don't think that um, I don't think that that little Leviathan was a Leviathan. <laughs> I think it was just a fish. It was just a fish. <laughs> I would have liked maybe a little more monster cameos, if you will. But yeah, there could have been a maybe few more. in the game. Oh yeah, definitely in the game. Definitely. So. uh... Yeah, so let's. We can't really talk about gameplay because. Uh, but we could talk about action play. What do you think about true, the action? Yeah. The action scenes were really cool. There was the oh, and this kind of ties into graphics too. The magic system was really neat. Oh, are we talking about the warping? The the warping oh, sounds so cool. were really cool, it was satisfying. And there's like a a crackle at the end of the the warp. And you can you, see it on their skin. You can see it on their skin, and there's like these little like feather flakes that pop out at the end of their warp, and it's like they sizzle away. And it's just it makes this awesome noise, <laughs> and it it's beautiful. And plus the the lightning, there's a lot of lightning spells in this movie, and it's amazing as well. And I could see it being a video game. Like I could yeah, tell definitely. that the the action was very video game esque. Like. I've played video games like this before. Very Final Fantasy style yeah. in the action. Um, it was a little bit hard to follow when he when Nyx was teleporting all over the place. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, that was really my only complaint. There was this really cool part where the sound, like, muffled. And they're fighting through this, like, muffled noise. And the sound of that muffle, it just made a really cool experience if it was only for a moment. And it just made... I don't know. It, it was it, really neat. Yeah, it was. Do you remember seeing that part? Yes, I after do. after we talked about yeah. it, watching it the first time, the second time. Really I cool. really liked when um they're signing the treaty, 
and they've got both sides. Niflheim's on one side, and Lucius is on the other. Just they're like men. And when the treaty falls through, it's just instantly their weapons just bam right. The weapons then just there. appear. I don't know where. It was so oh, it was satisfying. It was cool. Yeah. And the barrier, like when the barrier falls, it just I don't kinda, think we even talked about the barrier in this podcast. The at barrier all. is being held up. By King Lucius. By, or by King the Regis, crystal, really. By the crystal, through King... In any case, yes. The he, barrier is really what's keeping the city alive and at It's peace. what's keeping Niflheim out. Right. And and the city of Insomnia is being protected by this barrier, and the barrier is produced by the crystal, and the crystal is under the control of the king. And when they destroy they don't destroy the crystal but they like break it it. out of the vault that it's in and when they do that the barrier falls apart and it's just this slow crumple it shatters but then it just dissolves Dissolves, disintegrates i mean it was magic it was it was was so cool it was really it was a neat effect but yeah i mean the battle scenes were really neat the the fighting was spot on for final fantasy they had a lot of buildings that were falling apart from the monsters fighting, which the monsters fighting reminded me a lot of um, Power Rangers. <laughs> These huge monsters like fighting, but then, you know, Nyx and General Glock Coma was fighting amongst the rubble. The rubble is like falling through the sky and Nyx and General Glaucoma are like fighting <laughs> on the rubble that's falling. And it's just, it was very, it, it reminded me a lot of Final Fantasy VII Advent Children, where they're like jumping through the air and fighting at the Which, same time. That's interesting you say that because while I was doing my little bit of research before we did this, the way I understand it is some of the crew that worked on Advent Children worked on this movie. Oh, it doesn't surprise me at all. I mean, it makes sense that if a team worked on one Final Fantasy movie that they should work (laughs) on the next one, even if the, I mean, graphically at least, it was very similar in, you know, style. Yeah. It Probably the only problem I had graphically besides the mouth movement was some of the non-characters, like NPCs, if you will, (laughs) that didn't really have any relevance to the story. They were very basic and didn't have any detail. Where Nyx had a ton of detail. Some of like the Kingsclave members, they had. I found out that they had names. They had like one line in the whole. Like there was just not much to them. Which maybe they'll address. I don't know. And you know, it looks like that they put a lot of work into their character design just to have two lines. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, that's just the nature what, of CGI. What did you think of Libertus's uh, his his chew mouth? <laughs> oh no, that wasn't him. That was the. I thought it was. No, it was um the chancellor. The chancellor oh, has the chew right. in, his, in his lip. He <laughs> At looks least like someone looks like. who'd be chewing. Chew. He has his bottom lip is like pushed out a little bit it just looks odd i yeah, know it just he it was, just looked weird he was just weird he was general. very weird and, and he I, was very out of place next to the emperor that's another reason why i wonder if he's gonna end up being the the main the bad, bad guy, guy in 15 just because that's kind of how again you haven't played final fantasy VI. Like you need to play final I'm fantasy sorry VI. we're working on it i know <laughs> but um i played Kef- some of it kefka was a lot like that too where he wasn't he was just kind of out of place. He wasn't really... I don't think he was the Emperor. I could be wrong. I I don't... It's been a long time since I played it. But, um, you know, he just... He was out of place and kind of awkward. And I think that that's kind of how this guy is, too. Where he's not really... He, he clearly has some bigger meaning yeah. to the overall storyline. And he kind of... The way that the the emperor of Niflheim, yeah, oh, it, the way that or something the way like that. that that emperor Dulles. kind of um, treats him too is like, you know, like he is the one controlling these monsters, these demons, he, and yet he he acts like he is clearly the emperor, but the chancellor is just like a step down, like he's just as he. They're both. Part. I, I really well, even even when he's walking in to do the treaty, he's very carefree. Like he yeah. has hey. power that can stop whatever bad things happen to him. He's very carefree and just walks like he knows what he's doing, and it doesn't matter what anybody else says. When he's walking to the front door of the kingdom to talk with King Regis for the first time, he just walks up there and has you know no cares in the world. The Chancellor, and, yeah. 
It's, I don't know, it's it's neat. Those evil I, chancellors, man. I know, they There's get you every one. time. <laughs> There's always one in the crew. <laughs> oh. So what did you uh, think of the music? Music, the second time through, I noticed it a lot more. And they did a lot of, you know, tipping their hat to some of the classic Final yeah. Fantasy songs. I did notice the, like, the typical... Yeah, it was very nostalgic. <laughs> yeah, it's usual... <laughs> That was in the like celebration with the peace treater, treaty treaty sign. Um, I noticed that, it, but oh, even the battle music during the big fights, I noticed. I noticed that battle sound in the music, and I was definitely able to take See, take that in. I made it an effort to listen to the music the second time, and I can't remember it now. I remember remember thinking about it and saying oh yeah yeah yeah," and i can't remember it actually uh, at all yeah i i tried to pay a little more attention to the music when i watched it and it definitely has a final fantasy vibe obviously they can't make anything final fantasy any- anymore if they don't have <laughs> specific qualities and i think that when they make anything final fantasy they try very hard to incorporate those qualities no matter what they're doing no matter what the storyline and the music is one of those qualities that they just have to have and they do they follow through and it's it's really good i i enjoyed the i enjoyed the music even though it wasn't overly prevalent right well, are you excited for this game now that oh, we've had man, no I'm, investment in whatsoever? <laughs> I'm so excited for this game. <laughs> I We were talking about it the other day, but the day that they pushed the release date back two months, that day <laughs> I was walking through the store and something caught my eye and I thought, oh man, that looks like Final Fantasy. And I'm like, I told my wife, I'm like, I'm so <laughs> ready for Final Fantasy 15 to come out. And then I get a text from, from Kaylee saying, oh, yeah, this has been pushed back two months. I'm like, no, that's not even fair. <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> but it'll it'll be out soon enough, and we do have plans to review it after it comes out. I want to give us plenty of time to actually play the game. Enjoy so it. We don't have an official date for when we're going to have the review <laughs> out, but it's going to be after the first of the year for sure. So if you're eager to listen to us uh, review Final Fantasy XV, you can look forward to it because we're definitely going to do it. And we're going to do it right away. We're not going to wait for us to finish Final Fantasy 2 through uh, 14 <laughs> if we play 14. <laughs> but... um. You know, overall, this is a great movie. Great movie. I loved and, it. I mean, if you're a Final Fantasy fan, you're definitely going to love it. My so you wallpaper should watch it. is already... Er, <laughs> it's it's Nick's, Nick's on my phone. Mine, Mine's Noctis from before. And your wife's is uh, King Regis. King Regis, yeah. She really liked King Regis. And I, I totally see the yeah, appeal. He's I a very it. wise old man. And he didn't deserve to die like he did. <laughs> but I, no, it's cool. Nick's is still my favorite. That final scene of him is my heart. Be you know, still. I didn't really like Luna Freya when I first watched the movie. The first she looked time. very strange, but at first I to liked me. her. I liked her the second time through. I she kind of I I understood where she was coming from, even though she was the typical princess of yeah. You know, my duty as a princess. You know, and they say like at the very end, she says that um, she can't hardly go unnoticed with such a hero talking about oh. jonah hill <laughs> you know how is it that she's gonna get through unnoticed when she's, she's wearing, wearing like, all that the princess <laughs> outfit and everyone knows of her she probably was just like oh sense. he's so weird i can't he's got a pill addiction i just can't probably he's gonna give us away i better go <laughs> yeah i feel like that that she would do the same thing if it was me <laughs> She'd just Aww. be like, yeah, we need to we separate. Should we should go separate ways separate from ways. here. <laughs> Thank you, though. <laughs> you helped greatly. You know, she gets in the car before um, she separates from Nyx. And she's, she's like, says, your life is my in my hand, hands. My, my life is in your hands. And she's like very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> he did leave the pills behind, though. At least she didn't have to worry about that anymore. That's true. And I, he did a bad job driving, by the way. <laughs> really, I was thinking the opposite. Like, well, he I was guess he really, did. Good. Just a he lot of like stuff happened. A stunt car driver. <laughs> he was amazing at driving. You know, in King's Glade School, King's Glade School. <laughs> That's part of the training. You got to be an amazing driver, and you you're only allowed to drive 
um, whatever that type of car is, an Audi. Oh, which which reminds me, we haven't talked about this. The advertising. I was so sad that the real world was creeping into my Final Fantasy. <laughs> I was just about to bring that up too. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of ad- Beats advertising. By in this. Ugh, Beats by Dre. Beats by Dre. Beats by Final Fantasy. And I mean, I get it. There was a lot of places to put ads. It's just you know, I have to say, I haven't really wanted any Beats by Dre, mostly because they're insanely expensive. But if they made a Final Fantasy 15 um, special edition, maybe. All maybe. right, let's talk Beats by Beats Dre. by Dre. Let's talk Dre. <laughs> I want to know. Are you gonna do it? Yeah, that's, but like I said, it's, it's like the real world creeping in and I just, it is. I go to when Final Fantasy it, to escape see, that. You know, and they do a okay job at kind of just blending it into know, the background. I don't know, the Beats by Dre was the most prominent. The Beats by Dre, <laughs> I think it's just because that logo is so iconic right, anymore, yeah. it's kind of everywhere. And so when you see it, it's like, wait a minute. That's not a Final Fantasy 15 only <laughs> logo. Like that's a real world logo, and then it's kind of bring takes you out of the movie for that moment, and I I don't like that. That was very, it was very sad. I didn't really like the over exaggeration of the cars either. I mean, the cars were cool, but they yeah. were a little bit too luxurious See, for I'm my not, taste. I'm not too into cars anyway, so it didn't really matter. I didn't even know right. that that it was an actual, oh, yeah. an actual type. <laughs> So I mean, and I do, I do think that they were a little too flash. I, the first car, they get into one of the cars and they say that it's it's Noctis's car, which yeah. I kind of understood it was a prince's car. But the rest of the cars after that were all these same types Super of cars, fancy. Yeah. yeah. And it just was like, meh. You know, there was a a scene where um, Noctis is driving the car and then they get like attacked, and then the car like you mean goes. Nyx? What did I say? Noctis. Oh I yeah, I meant next. Um, and they get attacked and the car like goes between these two buildings. I don't know. How did he end up on the roof anyway? I don't know. (laughs) Anyway, the car goes between these two buildings and Luna Luna Freya jumps out and the car falls between the buildings with Nick still in it. And Nick's like throws it in reverse. (laughs) And I was so expecting him to drive out of between those two buildings. In reverse. I I totally was like, he would just back up and out of the, I'm kind of glad he would just drive up the wall. (laughs) But yeah, he didn't, he ended up um, stopping the car and jumping out. No, he broke his leg. Uh, when he, Oh yeah. You're no, he broke his leg when he fell. He was fighting the like helicopter guy. The, the like, helicopter guy. The hell it was like a guy that I don't I don't think he had helicopters. I think he had like feet jets or whatever. something. Whatever that guy was. Yeah, yeah I don't know. The big robot. Yeah. Mech. That was tra- tracing them. Thing. I think. Yeah. I think. Yeah, it was. There's so much going on. Yeah, but you need to see it. You need it's to see good, it, man. It's good. If you it's haven't good. yet. And if um, you can see it in theaters, if it's yes, still there. Yes, if it's still playing in theaters, go and see it because... If you can, if not, well, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm probably not going to release this until mid-September, so chances are it's over in theaters. And if that's <laughs> the case, I'm so sorry because it was amazing in theaters. But, you know, if you know someone with a projector, just project yeah. it on the side of your house. It should be good enough. You got enough. a surround sound system. Or yeah. surround sound headphones. Ooh. They make those now. Man... Beats by Dre. Beats by Dre. <laughs> Sponsor. <laughs> so, you know, uh, we really liked the, the movie. It was good. We're if you're totally going to be fan. seeing it again. I'm not going to buy it again because I've already bought it with my <laughs> um, my uh, super ultimate pack. Probably would have been cheaper to have bought it the amount of times we went. Yeah, movies well, are expensive. It's, okay. it's Again, it's seeing it in the theaters. Final Fantasy doesn't make movies very often, so if you're yeah. going to see it in the theaters, now's the time to do it. Final Fantasy 16 might not come out until like 2000... Just... 25. Just don't buy crappy con- concession stand sodas. Yeah. They're not worth it and they taste disgusting. <laughs> well... I hope everybody enjoyed our little review, our bonus episode for Yay. this month. I know we just got done with an episode September 1st. We actually recorded it no more than an hour ago. So, um, <laughs> you know, it, check out everything on zapnight.com. Follow us on all of our awesomeness. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google+. Plus. <laughs> Other October 1st, on we are reviewing Final Fantasy 1. So if you're a Final Fantasy fan, first off, if you're a Final Fantasy fan and you're listening to this, props to you. Because you 
out of the room. Are listening to a Final Fantasy like podcast episode and you're not a Final Fantasy fan, so I don't know what's <laughs> going on in your head, but you're amazing. Anyway, um we're doing we're reviewing Final Fantasy seven on October first, so check that out. Uh you can watch us play Final Fantasy well, you can watch me fail at Final Fantasy One for the <laughs> Nintendo um on our Twitch page. So check it out. Follow us, send us an email, let us know what you thought of the movie. I'd be curious to hear your thoughts and um you know i'll respond to him if i can and then uh yeah thanks for thanks for downloading this special episode and we'll see you next time